Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another session of our EV webinar series. I'm Chatur, the team manager, and with, I have with me Sipak Kumar Gupta, the head of our brakes subsystem. Today, he'll be discussing with you guys about brakes in general, and followed followed by a brief insight into the brake system of, of our own vehicle. Over to you, Sipak. <coughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Sipa Kumar Hota, um, currently third year mechanical engineering uh, batch, uh, and uh, a member of brake subsystem of uh, Formula Student Vehicle of TRR. So let's start the session. So brake system. So objectives. Uh, today we will be discussing about these uh, six topics, uh, starting from introduction to feature of braking system. So types and wide view of automobile braking system, terminologies and overview. All will be discussed as we go on. So let's start. So why do we need brakes? So in our daily lives. Uh, Inertia of motion plays an important part, uh, always mentioned. So in order to stop that motion, we need something, uh, something, uh, a device or a system, something that uh, need to stop that motion. So here the brake subsystem uh, sub comes. So main functions of brakes are these three. So to stop the moving vehicle in the shortest possible time and control the vehicle and uh, turning, so we need to slow down, and according to that, we have to call, etc. And yeah, so after stopping the vehicle, we need to suppose we uh, we are uh, in a vehicle and we uh, we want to go out somewhere, <coughs> keeping the vehicle at the roadside. So the vehicle, uh, for some reason, may rotate its wheel and uh, may move on. So to stop that. We need an emergency brake, which will be discussed in later slides. So these three functions are mainly for brakes. So and these are types of braking systems. So mechanical braking, electromagnetic braking, air brakes, until anti lock braking system. Although there are many other braking systems as well, uh, I have selected this main uh, brake system as we will we use in our daily lives. So. Let's discuss. So mechanical braking. So this is a little bit older mechanism uh, in which we use only push rods and S cam like this uh, simple mechanical uh, mechanical systems where when a driver applies brakes and throw brake lever, this rod we see rotates this cam clockwise or anti-clockwise depending upon the orientation of the S cam. So as we can see, when this S cam rotates clockwise, this drum rotates this, uh, I mean, uh, this side it, uh, it is puts, this is drum and this is, uh, these are uh, brake shoes and this slack adjuster. So when S cam rotates clockwise, this brake drum, sorry, the brake shoe, uh, touches the uh, drum first and th then this this brake shoe so one after another touches the drum and uh, stops the rotating of the drum and uh, indirectly the wheel also so mainly this braking system used in bicycles rotors motorcycle and some modern vehicles also so it's all about mechanical braking so, electromagnetic braking Although its principle is a little bit old, but the applications are modern. So what, uh, what is the mechanism here? So as we know, when a metal uh, disc or something rotating device rotates in a magnetic field, eddy currents are generated due to magnetic alignments in mainly in paramagnetic sub substances. So when it rotates and in a magnetic field, eddy currents are produced and according to Lange's law, the torque generated due to eddy currents is in the opposite direction of the rotation of the uh, disc or wheel something. So when we start applying electromagnetic braking, it uh, generates torque and uh, finally it is equal to the rotating torque and finally neutralizes it and 
the wheels rotates uh, stops the rotation so its working is like this so uh, it has mainly applications in railway system like uh, emus and uh, this railway system which undergo for a short range like uh, from intercity or uh, the main main big towns like uh, that this uh, system mechanism is used so road vehicles also it can be used in road vehicles also in aircraft also so a uh, little bit more applications are there so what are advantages and disadvantages advantages is as we is mainly frictional braking in our daily vehicles here no friction occurs no friction is there so no material loss so benefit is uh, it's benefit beneficial to us so again there is uh, less friction so low maintenance requirement also less noise since no friction is there simple in design and high degree of safety disadvantage is what uh, it uses mainly most of the electric power so uh, it is mainly used in railway system where continuous electrical supply is there as you can see in this diagram two discs are uh, connected to excel and here this here electro uh, electromagnetic coils are used where they generate uh, magnetic field and gradually they stop the rotation of these discs and finally the wheels also so less effective under uh, the so this uh, major disadvantage is it's less effective under very low velocities as we uh, i have not gone into the mathematical uh, derivations of the lenz's law but uh, there is more the rotation more the eddy currents generated so, so as the uh, rotation slows down so gradually the eddy current generates also slows down so so the uh, mechanism also uh, mechanism of electromagnetic braking also slows down so in it to support we need frictional braking so where uh, this here some uh, somewhere here they are connected frictional brakes along with this frictional brakes are also connected there in order to support it so this is all about electromagnetic braking then comes air brakes air brakes how in our older trucks or tractors we use air brakes uh, its main working principle is it uses air to pressurize the uh, braking uh, shoes of the wheel mainly so let's see how it works so here is the block diagram of the air brakes here uh, a reservoir is there which uh, uh, puts air dry air pure dry air a dry air although there are wet uh, air particles and dust it here the safety valve and other some uh, Uh, devices are used here which purify the way, uh, uh, air completely and put it uh, only put only uh, dry air particles so this air inside this reservoir is completely dry so after coming into the reservoir it goes to the compressor where it is pressurized more and through the pipelines and goes to the uh, wheel drums okay so when driver applies brakes this air mechanism is used so up, upon applying the brakes the opens the valves open inside the it and air goes into the front as well as rear brakes so here we can see in front a, di a diaphragm like structure or piston type where the uh, air goes and presses it so upon pressing when pressing it the s cam as you dis uh, discuss earlier earlier in mechanical braking this s cam s cam rotates either clockwise or anti clockwise depending upon its orientation it rotates and the drums are pushed towards the drum okay so like here also in the rear also the same mechanism occurs so as as soon as the driver puts its uh, foot away from the brake the air again uh passes from here and the diaphragm uh, and the diaphragm comes into uh, comes to its original position and the drums are pulled away from the wheels and the wheel starts rotation again so this safety valve here what is it doing is when 
when more pressurized air is coming to reservoir reservoir so it has some maximum capacity uh, up, uh, after that it need to uh, lose some air so this safety valve opens up and we sometimes in roads we listen like this sounds of trucks which the uh, which when st they stop it's because of this safety valve it means they uh, the uh, reservoir loses some of its air to maintain its ca high capacity so this is safety valve uh, this safety valve you see uh, is implemented for so this is all about air brakes mainly air brakes used in uh, uh, trucks and tractors as i told so after that air hydraulic brakes air hydraulic brakes is uh, just the higher version of air brakes where uh, <coughs> air is uh, filled into the reservoir but when it is distributed it uh, does not go directly to the wheels in fact it uses some hydraulic master cylinder and hydraulic circuits and the air goes to the hydraulic master cylinder there it pushes the piston air some piston is there and it pushes that and the fluid the hydraulic inside the pipeline pushes the uh, drums actually so air hydraulic brakes is just the higher version of air brakes so we sometimes think why don't we use hydraulic brakes in uh, majorly in uh, heavy vehicles is due to heavy braking the hydraulic system may fail due to leakage or something but air brakes if uh, something occurs like uh, is uh, if something fails air as you know fills in the our atmosphere and uh, this is uh, not a means uh, definite quantity it's uh, infinite quantity we have air so we can use air easily as our acting device but hydraulic hydraulic brakes are such that once the hydraulic uh, is lost we can't uh, regain it so mainly air brakes is used in heavy vehicles as we saw so air, air hydraulic brakes is just the higher version of it vacuum braking vacuum braking <coughs> is the effect of air brakes how so in uh, in our passenger trains as we see in our daily lives this this mechanism is used so here what happens <coughs> same air comes to reservoir then again comes to when driver brakes valve is opens and goes to the wheel but here it doesn't go directly to the wheel what happens the air comes to the vacuum reservoir actually here the air presses again this piston and because of this brake rigging it is something uh, sometimes it down so that this brake uh, drum or brake block is sometimes away while the uh, railway is in motion this brake block is away from the wheel so when station nearby comes it loses the air so that the piston piston comes to its original position it it comes like this sorry it uh, comes to upper means it moves forward so this brake rigging uh, moves upwards and the brake block is <coughs> it comes to the wheel robs it and stops it so this is all about vacuum braking which is used in our daily passenger trains or we see in our daily lives so that's it then aerodynamic braking when we see sky look uh, look at the sky and see big airplanes flying but we wonder how they actually stop actually so this is what they use so commercial flights there are uh, two types of flights commercial flights and jet fighters so first commercial flights commercial flights use three types of braking system mainly spoilers hydraulic brakes and reverse thrust in spoilers what happens when the wheel 
when the wheel touches down a sensor is there to uh, sense that and the ground swellers open up when they open up as you can see the inclination of because of their inclinations the air coming from uh, forward direction pushes this as the push it acts pushing force like uh, like uh, someone is coming from uh, from our front and we push like that so because of air uh, resistance it acts as braking again hydraulic brakes here we can see this uh, the lines are hydraulic lines means brake fluids are there in the lines and here in the excel we can see these black circles are rotors and the blue uh, the blue static thing is uh, uh, stator actually so when uh, drive uh, sorry pilot applies brakes all these multi uh, disc brakes these uh, these pistons rub against them so stop them another is reverse thrust how does that act reverse thrust is when the wheel touches again the air coming to the turbo fan is divided into two uh, two ways actually one is uh, bypass and there is inward towards combustion chamber and the bypass actually what happens in reverse thrust the bypass air is kept like that this uh, as you can see the uh, actually these are uh, uh, spoilers like structures because of them the air comes out of it so it like pushes action it goes into this and comes out of this like this uh, curve like so it transfers it, it's make a momentum to stop the aeroplane so aerodynamic braking occurs when the wheel touches down and all the three mechanisms start acting as soon as the wheel touches down the ground this is all about commercial braking uh, commercial flight me braking mechanism aerodynamic braking is, is also used in jet fighters also so in jet fighters what happens hydraulic brakes and parachutes are open open so this is a trivial system in aeroplane the hydraulic brakes but as the jet fighters, uh, fighters are more uh, um, they have more speed so they need an extra support so they use parachutes so these two they deploy when they actually use braking so this is all about aerodynamic braking then uh, hydraulic braking system so this is all we see in our daily lives very frequently the word hydraulic is derived from two greek words actually hydro means liquid or water or allos means pipe or tubing so the hydraulics is a subject generic name of a subject which uh, uh, deals with the practical applications of a liquid in motion so examples of hydraulic braking system can be uh, seen in daily life uh, familiar items such as automatic automobile jacks and brakes when uh, when tire punctures when uh, tires are punctured in vehicle these hydraulic jacks are used to lift the vehicle and repair the wheel actually so this so principles of transmission of fluid uh, pressure in hydraulic uh, braking system the main acting device is the fluid so this fluid uh, is acted by the uh, law uh, called pascal's law where according to this law uh, the fluid in a reservoir when you apply pressure to it uh, apply pressure to it the pressure transmits through the fluid so the pressure at this point is also equal to the pressure at this point so the hydraulic braking system mainly uh, acts on this principle actually pascal's law so this is the mathematical derivation of the, of this formula f1 d1 equal to d2 so is and this formula is actually used in our uh, uh, vehicle uh, maintenance systems also uh, here they apply some input force and the uh, vehicle is kept here so that it lifts up like that so hydraulic braking system is mainly two types drum brakes and disc brakes 
so drum brakes drum brakes is here can be seen so this is the uh, internal parts of drum brakes actually uh, upon it a drum is covered so we can can't see it directly uh, in order to see the internal mechanism we have to open it but disc brakes uh, deploy discs and calipers to uh, actually stop the rotation of the wheel so the whole system is open to the atmosphere so we can directly see through the wheel that uh, how does the disc brakes actually work so coming to the drum brakes this is the basic mechanism block diagram so here we apply the brake pedal and this vacuum booster is there and here fluid reservoir is there the fluid reservoir reserves the uh, <clears throat> brake fluid and this master cylinder mainly works as the distributor of the fluid fluid to the wheels and uh, when we apply the brakes uh, the master cylinder distributes the black fluid to the wheels as uh, as uh, uh, shown here so here the brake fluid comes to the wheels and here we can see the internal mechanism when uh, when we apply the brakes this fluid comes to the uh, slab cylinder this is called slab cylinder this is uh, master cylinder where the distribution happens and this is slab cylinder slab cylinder is uh, actually here in each drum there is a slab cylinder so here slab cylinder is there we can see so here slab cylinder comes inside it two pistons are there it uh, gradually fills the cylinder and pushes the pistons and in fact it pushes the pistons uh, the push, uh, pistons uh, push the brake shoes and the brake shoes toss to the brake drum and friction happens or so the rotation of the wheel stops so as soon as we uh, uh, put the foot away from a uh, brake pedal the again <clears throat> the uh, the fluid pressure decreases here and the amount of fluid present here also decreases and the due to this uh, restoring force of spring the drum brakes uh, sorry the brake shoes come uh, away from the drums also so like this this uh, drum brake mechanism happens so master cylinder master cylinder is a device which which is used to distribute the brake fluid throughout the wheel so it can be said also that the pressure applied by us at brake fluid Uh, sorry brake pedal is also transmitted uh, transmitted to the wheels as hydraulic pressure so you can see here here a reservoir is there where brake fluid are stored and here the spring mechanisms are actually uh, pass uh, passage ways ways are there where it comes to front uh, uh, front parts and the rear parts so actually there are master cylinder uh, two types oem type and tandem type so when in our vehicle we use uh, tandem type, type uh, master cylinder actually this reservoir can be near the master cylinder or away from the master cylinder depending upon the specifications of the master cylinder so drum brake assembly drum brake assembly as you can see uh, here i so here i showed the internal parts and this is a uh, <clears throat> the exploded view of the internal parts actually these are brake lines uh, brake lines brake linings these are brake uh, brake linings and this is this uh, wheel cylinder all these parts are assembled here materials of brake lining uh, what types of material are used in brake lining so high coefficient friction is the main thing stops the wheel rotation of the wheel is friction the high coefficient of friction with minimum fading is required what is fading fading is when the temperature uh, when friction occurs the temperature of the uh, interactive surfaces increases so at a high temperature like 594 kelvin or something like that uh, the hot uh, gas generated due to the friction forms a layer between the interfaces which uh, Uh, due to who is the uh, brake slips away slips from the drum actually so 
this uh, this uh, deactivity I means the uh, non activity is called uh, brake fading actually so the brake line uh, should have a high coefficient of friction and minimum fading in other words the coefficient of friction should remain constant over the entire surface with the change in temperature it should not decrease it should have low wear rate as more friction happens more wearing takes place so it should have the structure that the low wear rate should be there high heat resistance so, uh, since high <coughs> friction happens so high heat resistance it should be high resistance heat rate heat resistance it should have and high di heat dissipation capacity low coefficient of thermal expansion all these uh, factors it should have then comes the disc brakes mechanism so uh, this is the schematic diagram of the disc brakes mechanism where this is push rod where we apply the brakes and it uh, it is converted to hydraulic pressure here the master cylinder this is the reservoir and uh, this is the brake lines actually hydraulic lines it comes to the uh, wheel here this is a disc this is a disc ma uh, made of material uh, sorry metal uh, where <coughs> it it is connected to the wheel along with it rotates uh, with the wheel and when the brake brake fluid applies here at the piston this uh, clamping uh, device called caliper pushes the disc to rotate uh, stop the rotation and in uh, <coughs> and stops the wheel also these are uh, actually this is called rotor and this is called caliper here you can call it disc also brake disc also so here these are some uh, schematic rotors we used we use in our daily lives so here this part uh, this uh, disc brake is called uh, fixed type rotors and these two parts these two types of rotors are called floating type rotors why is this thing here what happens the entire material uh, entire disc is made of a single material so it is directly connected to, at the knotted bolt to the wheel edge but here two uh, two materials are there this is one outer part and this is one inner part the main outer part is made up of gray cast iron mainly and uh, here also the uh, outer part is no, the single part is uh, gray cast iron but the here the inner part is something like aluminum like uh, aluminum alloy like so why this difference here so here what happens when the temperature increases actually it may happen that the disc warp the disc uh, disc may warp like its uh, shape can change if a high temp it reaches high temperature but here what happens when here outer part is uh, at a high temperature due to the friction here the calipers are there it transfers it some of its uh, heat to the in in inner parts so in fact instead of this outer part the inner part uh, expand expansion takes place so the outer part is free from warping that's why this floating disc is used and here also the same floating disc and here this is fixed disc so uh, these are uh, nowadays these uh, these types of uh, uh, disc brakes are used here this is non vented type and this is vented type what is difference this non vented type the entire uh, disc is made up one single met, uh, single piece but here vented uh, uh, the two uh, solid type disc are uh, connected actually and the int uh, the internal structure of vented uh, disc can be seen here here you can see this uh, fins are there and why does uh, why is this fins are here so when friction occurs hot uh, air is generated inside the uh, at the interface to displace that away from the uh, brake disc to cool it from heating these fins are there so whatever inside while uh, uh, rotation the friction takes place the hot air is generated they are displaced away by these fins outer walls like this so they help in 
cooling down the heated rotors actually which is not uh, seen in uh, non vented types so definitely vented uh, vented types or uh, vented type rotors are better than non vented and this is this is a slotted type rotor actually and you can the many slots are there this is slotted type this is also same mechanism uh, same application same purpose also so it uh, the the fins uh, while rotates rotation when they are rotation uh, the they displace the uh, hot air when which is generated while uh, friction occurs between the interfaces so that's it uh, like this and this is drill rotors the holes are also uh, do the same way sweep away the uh, they sweep away the hot gas generated out of this which is better actually actually there are nothing is perfect so all these five types are have some merits and demerits actually. so here non very uh, this is actually the hybrid of all these three here you can see drills here you can slots and this is actually both both vented type disc so the main difference between these three uh, merits demerits i am uh, discussing little bit this uh, what happens is of course the material uh, mass is de decreased when we, <coughs> we drill or slot the rotor but main thing is the inter uh, interaction between the uh, brake pads and the wheel uh, disc surface so the drill and slotted type disc uh, actually fed away the brake pads easily so this is the main demerit although they the brake efficiency of the vehicle increases the brake uh, the brake pads are lost means uh, in uh, sort of 2 3 months like this or 6 7 months is like this so uh, frequent maintenance is maintenance is required for them okay so all these are uh, disc uh, disc uh, disc brakes so all these are made of metals later we can see what types of other disc brakes are out there so this is a the testing brake testing of this brake testing of the highest the fastest car bugatti chiron uh, let's have look This is the brake pad, and this is total caliper assembly. Here fitted, the caliper is fitted to the hub actually. Here start the rotation. Here you can see the temperature. See. The temperature which is very high here. See how the flame coming out of it. See.
temperature reaches over 1000 degrees celsius so after the heating it this this happens to the brake pad uh, the caliper assembly actually So as we saw in the previous video, the metal surface, what happens actually when it reaches high temperature, there may be, it may reach the boiling point of the uh, disc and uh, it may work. So our entire, entire effort will fail. So in order to stop that high supercars, uh, supercars or hybrid, uh, high rated vehicles we see like Lamborghini or Porsche like that they use carbon ceramic brakes actually what are these these disc actually not made of, of any metal or something these are made of, of actually ceramic carbon ceramic uh, composite materials because of which the disc is high means uh, uh, total light and uh, high temperature resistance high heat resistance so both are, uh, can be it is very efficient uh, uh, with respect to, to the disc brakes we use in our daily lives. In our daily lives, our conventional vehicles, disc brake made up of metals uh, very good. But when it comes to performance for a high supercars, uh, carbon ceramic brakes are used generally. This is the advanced, most advanced version of disc brakes nowadays they use actually. So comes then comes here, the this is the disc and this is the caliper. So there are two types of calipers actually, fixed and floating. In fixed, the here we can see the fixed caliper. The fixed caliper here uses the mechanism is like that. The hydraulic pressure, uh, the uh, comes, uh, the fluid comes through the brake lines to this, and the channel you can see and it applies and it applies uh, the brake pressure here, this side, that side. Why this is called fixed caliper because the entire assembly the outer part is fixed but the pistons uh clamp like uh, they uh, uh, they actually act like clamping uh, but the outer part is fixed but the, the pistons uh, uh slightly moved to the uh, to make friction with the disc so this is called fixed caliper so it can use two four three cylinders and mainly used in motorcycles in our motorcycles some trucks and cars and in our bicycles also so in this what happens in this calipers the disc brakes require high hydraulic pressure and the pressure is applied both uh, from both sides of the rotor and act like it acts like a clamping device to the wheel so this is floating caliper in floating caliper, what happens? It actuates only single system, uh, single cylinder, and the fluid comes here, pushes this cylinder actually, and uh, other. Uh, as we saw in previous uh, fixed caliper, there is no channel here, no channel here. Do what happens here? The uh, the brake fluid makes pressure here, the piston uh, um, contact with the disc generates friction, and here. This mechanism is there. One, the pressure is applied here. Here, some stirring pressure is generated because of which this brake pad uh, slightly comes to the disc. Uh, there is a YouTube video uh, for more clarification. We can refer to that. And uh, here, friction applies. So first, friction happens here, then here. So there is some time lag is there, and we can see the air grab the air gap uh, the air gap is here very less but here something more than that so there is some uh, time lag between the friction happens here and here so it takes some time 
to actuate actually. But according to cooling system, we can see protein caliper is better. But the main reason is uh, because of some time lag, we don't use it. Or we can may prefer to the protein calipers or fixed calipers depending upon our situations actually. Black fluid, the main reason of hydraulic braking system, the main acting device is black fluid. So it should have the following character, uh, these characteristics such as high boiling point. The brake fluid is subjected to, since the brake fluid is subjected to high temperatures, drum brake displays friction happens, though it should push the piston so that they uh, should uh, maintain a constant friction against the disc or drum. So it must have a high boiling point to avoid vaporizing. And this uh, vaporizing is a problem because vapor is compressible and negates hydraulic fluid transfer of braking force. Again, viscosity. Uh, consistent braking system operation in a reliable consistent braking system operation, it must contain a constant viscosity under a wire tension temperatures because temperature varies. If the viscosity varies, then uh, the variation pressure generates variation uh, variable type of uh, braking force because of which the braking system fails actually. So it should maintain a constant uh, viscosity and boiling point so that the braking uh, force or the uh, braking uh, system acts smoothly. So this is used in ABS, traction control and stability control. Uh, so another, the brake fluid is uh, taken to the wheels through uh, metal lines made up of reinforced steel. So the brake fluids must not corrode the metals inside the calipers, master cylinder, etc. And should have uh, low level of compressibility, if it contains high level of compressibility, then whatever we apply the braking force will go into the compressive, uh, into the compressing of the uh, brake fluid. So it should contain a low level of compressibility with the varying temperatures. Then brake fluid types, mainly DOT3, DOT4 and DOT5 uh, brake fluids are used. What is actually DOT? This is actually uh, governed through department of uh, transportation and dot three and dot four are mainly polyglycol based while the dot five is silicon based dot three and dot, uh, dot four are mainly uh, most common in our daily lives we use the dot three and dot four and uh, these are compatible inexpensive and cheap and but it destroys pain and ruined by moisture but dot five it is silicon based. Uh, it is used, used for uh, heavy duty applications, not compatible with the four and three and very expensive. As the quality increases, uh, the value also increases. So dot five is very expensive and uh, it is not used commonly in common lights, but it does not damage the point, the paint also. So dot five, although dot five is way better than dot three and dot four because these two are cheaper. So we use dot three and dot four brake pad materials. So though this is the main device which uh, <coughs> rubs against the wheel in drum brakes or disc brakes. So these brake pad materials are made up of either organic asbestos, semi-metallic or ceramic uh, metallic are also there in titanium uh, brake pads are made up of type titanium some types and organic asbestos and these four types are mainly actually so brake lines then brake lines the uh, brake fluid coming from the reservoir comes the master cylinder and after that it is distributed to the wheels of the vehicle so after distribution the <coughs> brake fluid is taken by brake lines to the wheels. So it uh, flows the channel of brake lines. Uh, these are called brake lines made up of uh, copper coated, tin plated, annealed steel tubings and flexible hoses. A flexible hose is made up of alternative layer of rubber and fabric sheets owned over each other. These are used to connect the steering front wheels. Actually what happens is in brake lines, uh, uh, the brake lines made up of uh, steel or reinforced steel, copper coated like like this. 
uh, they traveled like uh, some uh, rigid like structures and after that after a joint they uh, <clears throat> divide into branches and after that flexible hoses are used and actually uh, after coming from a certain distance through brake lines the <clears throat> braking fluid is distributed via the flexible hoses to the wheels actually so this is all about the branching of uh, brake fluid brake lines and dry and wet tires we even wonder why these uh, structures are there on the tires like uh, racing cars are this type of plane but the wet tires are like this plane uh, they, this uh, they contain this type of uh, structures actually why does that happen in racing cars uh, mainly these are called dry weather tires uh, to contain maximum traction on the ground they use this type of tires as you can see total plane this uh, tire surface total plane and it uh, uh, it holds maximum traction force with the ground but while the atmosphere is wet or uh, in rainy seasons we use this type of tires this type of tires uh, tires uh, the structure due to that it displaces the uh, uh uh water particles from the surface to contain the maximum uh, maximum traction control as you can see here in rainy seasons it displaces the water from the interface otherwise the interface will fill with the water layer and slipping will occur so these are mainly two types of tires brake effectiveness uh, effectiveness of brake system depends upon all these factors amount of pressure applied to the shoe brakes as the more pressure applied the more effective the brake area of brake lining uh, the more the area the less the brake pressure so the radius of brake drum actually radius of uh, <coughs> brake drum uh, as the radius of brake drum increases the effective braking also increases but up to a certain limit so the radius of brake drum can be increased up to a certain limit only and the radius of car wheel it is also the same as the car uh, <coughs> radius of car wheel increases the torque required decreases uh, uh, according to that the torque also varies according to the car wheel according to that the brake effectiveness also de decrease so like this and coefficient of friction of braking surfaces braking surfaces uh, should maintain a constant coefficient of friction uh, to uh, for maximum brake effectiveness as we discussed earlier and coefficient friction between tire and road surface also should be maintained a constant uh, constant uh, value otherwise the wheel locking will cause the vehicle to slip or skid the difference between uh, drum brakes and disc brakes so drum brakes what happens brake fade easily occurs by collected uh, dust and then drops inside the drum as we saw earlier drum brakes contain a closed uh, system of braking system its internal parts are totally hidden and whatever the dust uh, air particle it contains uh, it can't escape to the outer atmosphere so brake fade easily occurs in drum brakes and but the maintenance is cheaper easy repair work we can repair drum brakes very easily than disc brakes actually we can <coughs> replace it very quickly than disc brakes and in order to inspect but uh, in order to inspect total assembly is to be opened in disc brakes what happens is we can see through the wheel that how much the brake is faded and how much is left for braking but in drum brakes we have to open the complete assembly in order to see whatever uh, fed is happened or whatever damage has happened to the internal system so in disc brakes no such problems occur brake fed does not occur and expensive but it is sometimes expensive than drum brakes and repair work is completely difficult because of complex structure inspection is very easy we can see through the wheels that uh, the how much the disc brakes is left or hmm So self uh, the disc brakes are self adjustable and more efficient and more safety also these are advantages and disadvantages of hydraulic brakes 
equal braking occur on uh, all the equal braking action on all wheels increased braking pro simple in construction low wear rate of braking lines flexibility of brake lines increased mechanical errors but main disadvantage is the whole braking system phase due to leakage of fluid from brake linings that's why the, for the main reason we use hand brakes hand brake systems are also called emergency brake systems which use uh, uh, which can be <coughs> applied from our hand actually as you can see here this picture we apply in our cars and this applies and this is this uses a different uh, branches than uh, the conventional hydraulic brake system so in order to stop the vehicle we use this cantilever braking system when uh, in conventional brake vehicles what happens is uh, when we apply brakes the uh, wheel locks completely and it slip it actually skids and it no longer starting condition or the uh, rotation of the wheel no longer is pure rolling so in order to stop the vehicle we apply the brakes but the uh, vehicle straight goes to the hurdle and crashes but in anti-lock braking system what happens according to our uh, brake force required it uh, sends a braking uh, braking uh, through the sensor it uh, sends some signal for which the rotation uh, does not stop completely but it rotates frequently means uh, half stop half rotation half stop half rotation like this and so that the pure rolling static conditions remains all adult so the control is very easy in, uh, you, when you use anti lock braking system uh, this is the actually a video uh, due to some time constraints, I am unable to show this. So we can see later in our groups. I can send it. Brace terminologies, stopping distance. Stopping distance is uh, what stopping distance is. When we uh, when we are driving a vehicle and suddenly see something coming in front of our vehicle, and <clears throat> the instant we see and the instant the uh, vehicle stops after the braking complete braking is uh, the travel uh, the distance travel in this pro total process is called stopping distance and the reaction time is we saw the hurdle and uh, we put our force on the uh, braking pedal the time lapse between this inst these instances is called reaction time and the braking distance is when we apply the brakes and the uh, uh, st uh, vehicle stops completely so this distance travel is called braking distance so mathematically what stopping distance is equal to distance travel during the re reaction time plus braking distance and sleeping and sitting this is the major difference we face in our lives sometimes we call it sleeping sometimes we call it skating what happens actually in sleeping speed of the vehicle is smaller than the speed of wheels as the vehicle is on a suppose the vehicle is on a muddy surface or icy surface our wheel rotates more than the vehicle runs actually so this is this condition is called slipping skidding is when we apply our brakes to complete uh, stop the vehicle completely but the vehicle does not stop although our wheels lock but the uh, <coughs> uh, vehicle slips away this condition is called skidding though this is called sleeping and skidding brake fed uh, uh, because of the high temperature the uh, brake system is unable to work effectively that this is called brake fed and this is the conventional braking network of the car, of a car uh, front types are used disc and uh, uh, <coughs> rear parts use uh, drum brakes because of FAT braking design procedure of our EV brakes so in our vehicle first brakes calculations are done design after that design of pedal system according to rules happen then selection of various components happen at the final step is final assembly happen so we can see the pictures actually this is not our uh, system actually this is a, con uh, so a formula random uh, formula student vehicle structure of brake, uh, pedal assembly this is a actual uh, accelerator and this is uh, brakes and uh, if we <laughs> use uh, transmission then we can uh, actuate a clutch but 
if we don't use a transmission system we can use only accelerator and brakes and this is our rotor and this is a caliper so future of braking system so although we use all the braking systems we discussed uh, the in the previous slides in future this uh, the <coughs> the efficiency of the braking system affects mostly so what is regenerative braking regenerative braking means when you <coughs> in order to stop the vehicle we uh, utilize some of you don't utilize but uh, uh, we use some of energy our system energy so at at uh, as its name implies, regenerative braking means it regenerate it regenerates some of it uh, the energy we used in braking. So how did you, uh, how did how is that? So this is mainly happening in electric vehicles where the motor controller in EV what happens the uh, from the battery current comes through the motor controller to the motor and transmission system and uh, finally the wheel rotates in regenerative braking what happens when uh, the <coughs> brake pedal or the accelerator is left or the foot is kept away from the accelerator pedal the <coughs> wheel rotates freely as we don't uh, give, supply any energy anymore as uh, we we have kept our foot from the pedal so at that condition the wheel rotates freely and we can uh, <coughs> regenerate that we can extract energy from that uh, movement actually so this is what regenerative braking does so the motor application we rotate the wheels but when the rotate, uh, wheel rotates freely we can act it a generator and regenerate some of our energy we have lost in braking. So this is what regenerative braking does. So there are various methods of regenerative braking. Uh, various methods. I, I due to some time constraints, I am not able to go into the very deep of this. So uh, there are various methods of this actually and. Although this regenerative braking principle is little bit old, but uh, in daily lives, this this is application is very advanced as it is applied in bullet trains, electric and hybrid vehicles to increase the range and efficiency of the braking also. And for EV, it is very crucial as uh, Tesla uses its in its models in regenerative braking. So uh, we have lost whatever energy we lost. Uh, from the battery can gain some of its energy uh, through the regenerative braking. So it's very efficient in our future ways. So this is all about Dex. Thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, if any queries is there, you can ask in chat section. Thank you, Sipak. Uh, now we'll be having a doubt session, guys, where um, if you have any more doubts, post in the comment section. The comments we've got so far, we'll be clarifying them right now. OK, so the first question is, what is the what is the difference between brakes in CV and in EV, excluding regeneration? I mean, in just normal EV vehicle. Uh, again, please. Uh, what is the difference between brakes in CV and in EV, excluding regeneration? in just normal EV vehicle. OK, so in CB, uh, actually, there is not, not much difference, actually. In CB, we use uh, disc brakes. And in EV also, we can use uh, disc brakes. And there is not much difference. In EV, what happens is, in order to gain the maximum uh, extract energy from the uh, braking procedure, we use high, uh, regenerative braking. Otherwise, there is not much difference between AV braking or uh, CV braking, actually. OK, next question. Does ABS uh, is apl ABS applicable for drum brakes? ABS, uh, yes. Uh, 
ड्रम ब्रेक्स इट कैन बी टू सम एक्सटेंड बट वाट एपेंस इज ड्रम ब्रेक्स एफेटिव ब्रेकिंग डज नॉट अकर दैट देर इज ए सम टाइम लैग एक्चुअली इन डिस ब्रेक्स द एज सुन एज वी put uh, the pedal on the uh, ped, uh, put our fo- uh, put on the pedal the <coughs> braking happens so the effectiveness of the disc brake is more than drum brake so abs is mainly used frequently used in drum brakes and some extent we can use but the uh, result will not be much uh, fruitful i think okay next question friend springs in master cylinder uh again again i i can't hear what's the purpose of having two different springs in master cylinder so oh so the uh, two different uh, two different springs are for distributing the uh, <coughs> for front uh, front uh, section of the vehicle and for the rear brake uh, rear section of the vehicle if you are using uh, for both the part uh, front part and brake, uh, rear part Uh, we can uh, you are using the single master cylinder we have to use two springs otherwise we use two different master cylinder for the different purposes is uh, why does it ha- this happen happens is due to weight transfer some of the weight from rear side is transferred to the front side of the vehicle during braking so in order to stop the vehicle completely we have to bias the braking is such that the we <coughs> can generate more torque torque on the front side less torque on the rear side so in order to distribute that completely the two springs are used uh, or else we can use two different master cylinders for that purpose okay next question why no thermal management is used for braking system so <coughs> in this uh, in drum brakes uh, the system is like that it is hidden from in the wheels so it is uh, difficult to uh, pass the air for cooling suppose we use uh, air cooling it is difficult to pass the <coughs> air through the channel actually the internal part of the drum brake is completely hidden under the drum so uh, we uh, can no other way uh, can uh, do that but in disc brakes we as uh, earlier uh, saw that most of the part is uh, open to the atmosphere so we no longer have to uh, uh, use another thermal management system to cooling purpose so it's uh, whatever uh, its uh, surface is open to the atmosphere see in the uh, disc brakes what happens at one point only the clamping force occurs and uh, friction occurs but all other parts are completely open to the atmosphere so all the uh, the uh, uh, surfaces are used dissipate actually to the air the heat to the air so no uh, in this breaks there is no such thermal management okay which type of braking fluid do we use uh, uh do we use means uh, in our in our no, ev right. error yes yes so yes. dot 3 or dot 4 mainly dot 4 we use ethylene glycol best okay next question does braking performance also coefficient of friction depend on the surface area of disc in disc brakes give reason if not why not reduce disc area to reduce the weight also to what extent we can reduce oh <clears throat> we can actually uh, upon the increasing the braking surface uh, brake uh, brake the clamping interaction surface we can use the braking uh, braking effectiveness but up to some extent actually we can't use the total air uh, uh, the surface of disc to uh, uh, for braking purposes so as we see generally the <coughs> restriction up to 110 degrees of the arc we use the caliper it it, it is uh, uh, it is oriented at some arc no so it is up to 110 or mainly 110 to 120 degree mainly maximum limit is that so as that the braking for uh, performance is not compromised there is some limit okay next question imagine there is a weight imbalance on your form from 
on your on you from wheels let's say total front weight is divided in 30 to 70 percent ratio how would you tackle this problem uh, again again please imagine there is a weight imbalance on your front wheels let's say total okay. front weight is divided in 30 to 70 percent ratio how would you tackle this problem uh uh, for that uh, condition uh, is the, the rear part of the actually what happens is during braking if there something is occurs like that so uh, for both the uh, front parts uh, uh, one type uh, one brake pressure is applied and uh, through the rear part one brake pressure is applied so if such thing things happen so we should short, uh, slow down the, we should leave the accelerator pad as soon as possible and uh, <coughs> focus on the rear brake system actually. So that the rear brake uh, actuates uh, to its most up efficient and the vehicle tries to stop. stop. So uh, since our vehicle is rear uh, drive, so if we control the uh, rear drive, you can handle the situation somewhat to somewhat. Okay. Next question. Why doesn't the ceramic disc brakes require a substantial pedal force or any technical assistance? And what is an involute cooling duct in CDP? Uh, a first, uh, second part I could listen. First part, do you want me to repeat it? Uh, yes, uh, please. Okay. Why doesn't the ceramic disc brake require a substantial pedal force or any technical assistance? Okay. So what happens is uh, in our metal disc brakes, there is some rotational inertia. These are made of metals, so they have they have, they contain some uh, substantial amount of movement of inertia. But ceramic brakes, they are very light, so, so so they don't need much force to stop actually. So this is what happens in carbon ceramic brakes. In metal surfaces, the although the disc size increases, everything increases, but the uh, with the increasing size also the weight also increases because of their uh, because they are made up of metals so they have some substantial amount of movement of inertia that's why in supercars we replace carbon ceramic brakes instead of uh, metal brakes disc brakes okay and what is an involute cooling duct in cdp <laughs> Uh, inductive cooling yes. involute cooling duct so actually I have not uh, so I am completely unaware of this term so sorry I can't tell that okay, I, will, uh, I will definitely come, to, come back to you, this topic this question will be clarified in the whatsapp group if any of you are not in the WhatsApp group, please join the WhatsApp group as soon as you can. And all the other questions which haven't been answered so far, we'll be answering these questions in the WhatsApp group. So make sure you keep looking at your WhatsApp in the WhatsApp group time after time. Thank you, Sipak, for uh, taking the time to explain to us about brakes and how it works in our vehicle as well. We'll be meeting you in the next session tomorrow at 3 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Gracias.